Guys, what was the, how physical was that game? You know, there was a lot of whistles, a lot of bodies banging. What was the physicality and intensity like on the court today? Um, it was a very physical game. Um, you know, a lot of physicality on drives, rebounding. Um, you know, bumping you, cutting through the lane. There's a lot of that. So um, it was very physical. Miles, you played in a lot of these. So yeah. Where does this stack up in terms of the intensity and physicality when you played in Illinois? Yeah, that's definitely one. That's their, um, that's their thing. You know, they just try to be as physical as they can. So going into the game, coach was already uh, saying all that and preparing us for all that. So he was like the, the most physical probably team in the Big East. So we just had to be ready for that. And, you know, we'll be all right. Mayor, in practice, I was watching you. You were on fire, which I'm sure you're quite aware of. Did you take that into the game with confidence? Uh, yeah, I feel like I have the utmost confidence in my ability to shoot the ball. Um, just try to, you know, get a lot of reps and stay disciplined in my shot. And, you know, I got the utmost confidence I can knock them down. So. And the first one or two going in, it makes a big difference. Absolutely, absolutely. Definitely give me, gives me more of a push, you know, to keep shooting and keep knocking them down. So um, I'm glad I got off to a good start. Miles, how tough is it when you have play two games like this and you only got eight guys and mm -hmm. you know it's physical I mean yeah I mean it's tough but like it is what it is at this point and, you know other other teams across the country are going through the same thing we're going on so we try not to look at that as a as a disbenefit or a disadvantage so we just try to focus on the eight people we have and do our best to just go out there and play as hard as we can and win this game but, but, but how hard is it to win a game like this without big men I mean, you can see out there, they, how many offensive rebounds they had? Anybody know? 13. Yeah. 13, so yeah, I mean, we're missing that. So a lot of those offensive rebounds could have been ours if we had that extra size. Yeah, definitely. But it's still our job to box out and try to rebound and get together and focus. Absolutely. Talk about what it's like having to go through um, like the COVID protocols, like not being, like, you know what I'm saying, missing <coughs> I mean, it's definitely, uh, you know, something difficult. Um, I feel like I trust the group of guys that we have. Um, you know, we're always just the, you know, our chemistry is out of this world for a fairly new group. And, um, you know, I feel like we always bounce back from adversity. So despite the COVID pauses that we've had, um, you know, the, the things that we had to alter because of COVID, I feel like, you know, we we're always able to bounce back from that. So it's been difficult, but the group of guys that we have um, have a lot of perseverance and we can get through it for sure. You know, not having enough guys to Uh, it's difficult, um, but like I said, you know, uh, in every practice, despite how many, however many players we have, we're always locked in and um, paying attention to the details um, that we need in order to win games. So it's a little bit different, but you know, the preparation is still the same. What does it say about your team that, despite being short-handed, you're right there? Uh, I have the utmost faith in this team. Um, I believe in every guy, one through 13 or 15, however many players we have. I believe in every one of us, you know, we each work really, really hard. We're all unselfish and we care about winning. And I feel like we show that every time we go out on the floor. So tonight was just another example of it. Um, can you answer that question too? What it shows about this team? Oh yeah, nah, it shows that, that's just Seton Hall pride right there. You know, uh, no matter like the outcome or whatever it takes, we're just gonna go out there, put our jersey on and play as hard as we can. So um, I think that's just what Seton Hall is. You know, despite the lack of size you guys had, your defense kept you in it. What was the defensive game plan coming in? How well did you guys execute it? Um, we just wanted to, you know, be gritty, you know, be scrappy, um, get down and defend. Uh, we know that our defense, when we get stops, it leads to good things on the other end. So that was just the goal, just to, you know, communicate uh, for the entire shot clock and talk to each other and, and sit down and, and try to get them to miss as much as possible. So Last one. Hey, guys, you've been through a lot with the pause, mm -hmm. COVID, these two tough shorthanded games. What's the mood like? And as, a, as the upperclassmen, veteran guys, what's the message going to be that the players walk out with that? Um, just staying in the course. I mean, we're still, in a, we're still in a very good spot. Like, I don't want people, want our teammates to, and now I'm gonna tell them this. I'm, I don't want our teammates to think like we're in a bad spot because we lost two uh, conference games and we can't make up for them or anything like that. Like, we're still in a very good spot that we put ourselves in, and we're gonna succeed down the down the stretch. Guys, if you can get Ice or Ike or Tyrese <coughs> back for Tuesday uh, or whatever, how much will that help? A lot. Oh, yeah, a lot. I mean, just having a, a full team, even even Tyler Powell, even, even 
uh, Brandon Weston, away. having all those players out there is just an extra help. You know, they bring energy. So, yeah, having those two big guys out there is going to help us a lot too. So. Yeah, most yeah, definitely. Kevin, how hard is it to win a game like this when your entire front court is unavailable at the end of these games? No, I, you know, it, it's, it's, it is what it is, Jared. There's nothing, nothing you can do about it. So, you know, I thought the guys out there gave great effort, and uh, you know, we had our chances. We we had two good chances, and you just got to give them credit. They they really hit the glass in the second half, and that, I thought that was the difference. What are your thoughts on how the game was officiated? I thought it officiated. We, we the Big East has the best officiating. Staff in the in the country. It's officiated at a high level every night. We're not practice. We're not practicing right now. We I have eight guys. We, we just we dummy offense. We lift. We watch film and we walk through. The coaches are the players, and we just walk through it. I mean, the best we can. There's, you can't play these guys this many minutes and expect them to practice. It's just it's just not not what we're doing. Yeah, is there any chance you get Ike or someone back nope. Tuesday? No, they're not back until uh, after Butler. Coach, you guys have nine games in total in January. How are you guys going to prepare mentally and physically? Uh, I the only the only the only tough stretch is uh, I think uh, the Johnnies and Johnnies and Marquette. I think that's just, I think that's the way it goes. I, I haven't to be honest. I haven't I haven't looked at the schedule where it does. It's just like, like I said. There's there's nothing anybody can do about this. We just have to kind of deal with it and stay positive and move forward. And that's what we're going to do. Is it frustrating? We're 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 still in a good spot. We're still a very good basketball team. That losing two games is not going to change that when you have eight guys. It's just when we get back full strength, we're just going to have to work on getting back into the rhythm that we are in, and I'm going to be extremely patient. I know most people won't be, but I will be. Is there a source of pride in the fact that you've come out and played these two games and it's been right down to the wire in both of them? No, I just think that's, that's the type of kids these guys are. You know, They have a lot of pride in their games. They play extremely hard. Um, you know, under difficult circumstances, I think they're showing their true colors. Kevin, uh, what was it like to have uh, Jameer Harris get hot, and how do you think that'll help him going forward? Yeah, I, I think it was, you know, I think the one he made in Providence in the second half kind of relaxed him a little bit. Um, you know, I thought he came out and was aggressive. You know, the, the issue I'm having right now is, is you know, with the, the, our lack of size, trying to play Jameer and Bryce at the same time is really difficult because as you see what happens when they're both out there, we just get... You know, we can't rebound very well. So uh, not that they're not trying, not that they're not boxing out. It's just the amount of switching we do. Um, it just it just led to offensive rebounds. Kevin, you've seen this lead evolve over the years. How much more do you think Slater needs to go over with Daniels out today and with Spider not being around anymore? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, Brandon Slater is one of those guys that reminds me of Miles Kale. Um, just one of those guys that when you watch film, you, you're like, oh, you know, doesn't shoot it great. He doesn't do this. That. And then all of a sudden, you know, you look at him, he's plus 14 every game. You know, he's just a, he's a tremendous, tremendous. He, he, he does everything that they ask him, to, ask him to do. He plays the three, he plays the four. Uh, he guarded our best player at, at times tonight. Um, he guarded the ball at times tonight. You know, I just think, you know, I think that's what I love about Jay's players are that, you know, he always has guys that understand their role and embrace their role. Just a couple more. Coach, on a positive note, how do you feel about Bryce's play today? He shook a defender on the court, had Kyrie out of the seat. Like, talk about Bryce. Yeah, I mean, you know, Bryce played well. And the, the mood of the guys, I mean, you're in a good spot, like you said, but they, they've lost two hard-fought games. How's the mood, and what are you going to say to these guys about that? Uh, we talked about it, Jerry. It's, it's just, uh, you know, the, the, you're dealing with life. Everybody's kind of dealing with adversity. It, you know, it's not always going to be smooth sailing. You're going to lose some games in this league, you know. And then when you're, out, you know, when you're, you're, you're missing a seven foot one guy and a six eleven guy um, on two big physical teams, you know, to give the effort they have. And um, I, I, I'm still as I'm as positive as I was after we beat Rutgers. There's nothing changed. I mean, uh, I know where we'll be at the end of the year, and I, I'm not worried about these two games. Jared was out there. Yeah, I, I think that's where the players are frustrated more than anything because, you know, we were. I thought we really 
I thought our, our effort on the defensive end, you know, we forcing them to have 17 turnovers, you know, that's just they, that's it's almost impossible to do. Um, but again, it, you know, it's kind of a lack of size. You know, you got Trey Jackson out there who's not, you know, usually it's Ike and Trey or Tyrese and Lex. You know, that's it's a different. You know, you're taking away a seven footer and a six eleven guy that are two great rebounders. So. Um, and you, they are a very good offensive rebounding team. They always have been. And where they punish you more than anything is they get threes off their offensive rebounds. And that's what happened tonight. Jared was out there 37 minutes. After a game, especially as physical as this one, how's he feeling emotionally, physically, mentally? How's he doing? Tired? I'm, I'm sure he's tired, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Appreciate Thank you. Yep.